Well, it's that time of year again. We're going to Kings Canyon now. And it's important for me to check all my camping gear, especially my air mattress. I just found out that the bellow that I used to fill this, one of them is bad, it leaks. So hopefully the other one will get me through on this um, camping trip. We leave Friday uh, late. It's a late flight, so um, we're gonna be starting pretty much getting in late on Saturday. Anyway, stay tuned. All right, getting back to my camping gear. So I have all these items laid out. I have to go through each and one of them to make sure that it, they're ready to be used on the field. Um, I did create a new footprint for my tent, uh, made it out of Tyvek. I don't like the one that it came with. It, it just doesn't seem that great. But besides that, everything else uh, we have here, I think we're pretty good as far as having our equipment in, in order. We order food, so I have to fill these bear cans up. Kings Canyon does have bears, and the requirement is that you have to have um, bear cans. You cannot use ursacs or anything else in Kings Canyon. Anyway, stay tuned. So now we're in Dallas, and we're doing a connection here to get to Fresno. That's our final destination. This travel to California is always a long haul for all of us. Okay, so we're at the bar. It says we have a long layover here in Dallas. Uh -oh. We're trying this place out, and we're doing drinks. <laughs> Here is a Louisiana plate shrimp with rice and a nice Cajun sauce. They're really good. And Michael's in it. He really. So this is day two. Uh, we arrived late last night. We're in Fresno right now. We got a really nice house. Unfortunately, we had a larger group of people who was supposed to be on this hike, and it turned out that it's not going to be the case. There's only seven of us, so we're going to be doing a hike. This is a very nice house. I have to say it's pretty big. I can show you this is the room we're staying in. Don't mind the mess. Our camping stuff is here. Made it safely. Unfortunately, one of our person who's hiking, the bag was destroyed uh, with mishandling at the airline. It's the bathroom. This house has three bathrooms. This is the other room. And then we have an entertainment room here. Another room not being used. This room here is uh, Lori's. Pretty fancy. Got pillars. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> and we have a, a full on bathroom. That's a walk in closet in there, Mike? It's a room. It's another room, is what it is. Oh, wow. And then the downstairs, I'll show you in a minute. And this door here is the garage. That's the garage. Then we have a dining room. Here's our kitchen. Water. Entertainment room. And then over here we have one room and another bathroom. All right, so this is the yard of this, this house that we're at. Water is an issue here in California. It's kind of a weird setup. They, they planted trees all along the side here and a little patch of grass and then the rest of it is all a cement walk here. Yeah, we're about to head out soon. Uh, we need to pick up some stuff for our, our camping gear and, and then uh, kind of visit a couple of the local breweries and, you know, kind of enjoy these next two days before we actually go and do our hike. So I've been up since five o'clock this morning, made breakfast for these folks. We're going to the Sequoia National Park. There's a turkey. So we're now in the Sequoia National okay. Park and we're actually going to go to the visitor center. There he is. All right, so we're going to be heading down to the Sherman Trail, which is all the big Sequoia, actually the Sherman Generals down there. So last time we came here, uh, it was a few years back. It was just my uh, buddy and I. Now I'm here with my wife and some friends. They have not been here to see the trees, so they're probably going to have an uh, awesome experience here to see these massive trees. Look at that. Is that a bear? Where? On the tree? 
Mother Nature, man, it is incredibly beautiful. This is called the house. I've taken pictures of them. Take one all the way up to the trees with them. More big trees. Compared to all the other. Why is it? So it does. It does. It does grow on the trees. Uh, why not as commonly? Probably moisture retention. Uh, the exterior of the sequoia is 31 inches thick uh, in, for bark itself. So really, really thick bark, and the bark works kind of like a spongy insulator. If you're on the Congress Trail, I recommend touch, touch the tree. Yeah, yeah. Have, right. Yeah. You know, it's it's different. It's yeah. hollow, and I think that that uh, lack of moisture is is what essentially uh, uh, it, it attracts less moss. But you do see it on some trees, and especially in places like uh, uh, Congress Trail, where they, they're near the creek, or um, Big Trees Trail where they're in a meadow that has high humidity, high moisture, you'll see a lot of like lichen and stuff on, on the tree. The other question is, we saw like this like egg-like white thing hanging off one of the trees. Um, is, it looks like a look, mushroom, look, or like a, some kind of fungus. I don't know if it was fungus. A fungus or if it was like an egg sac of something. I don't know. It okay. most likely is a mushroom. Okay. Yeah, it's most likely a mushroom. Then I've seen a lot of those. They're, the they're in question, season. <laughs> are there yeah. seedlings that look like, because I don't know what it looks like as a baby. As a baby. Okay, so baby sequoias. Yeah. So the best way to experience baby sequoias, if you just like, you know, I don't want to do too much work to go and see a baby sequoia, right. head inside the museum. And we have We're a little, head down there. We, we have a little greenhouse okay. and you'll see the sequoia saplings. So what germinates the seeds? What gets the seeds started for the sequoia? So is it fire that activates so, them? So fire is an important part of that ecology. Right? Okay. Um, uh, you have trees that are holding on to their cones for anywhere between 14 to 20 years, awaiting that fire to show up. The fire shows up. What it does is it clears the brush and any of those young trees in the area. Uh, so the ground is cleared that provides sunlight, right? So we have that, that's a really important ingredient. But now the ground is cleared uh, and it's fertilized with those ashes. Oh, okay. The heat during that fire rises to the top, the cones dry. By the time the cones are fully dry, a breeze comes by and the seeds fall onto the newly cleared ground. Okay. From there, hopefully, there's a winter season that comes thereafter. That's the germination period where they're waiting in there, frozen and cold and moist. As the spring starts to come about, then those those seedlings grow we'll from on. there. Yeah, so that that that's uh that's the essential ingredients, right? We have water, we have a germination period, we and have fire. sunlight, we have fire that all help produce that sequoia. Now, if you like, I said the easiest way to see a young sequoia is just head to the museum. But uh, if you want to work a little bit harder, head into Lost Grove or head into Mere Grove. You know, do those hikes. Uh, well, we're and, going up and, there. And that's, those were yeah. areas damaged by the KMP complex fire. Oh, okay. However, because we did prescribe burns in some of those sequoia groves and in certain areas, it didn't affect them as much as they should have, the fires. Um, so what, what we did is a we had a natural wildfire come into that area, which is really good. Mm -hmm. uh, and so you will see a lot of sequoia saplings, a lot of really, really tiny young sequoias that were birthed from that fire. So that's, that's good news. Cool. Yeah. Uh -huh. All right, so we're Thank getting you. ready to leave, doing the final stuff. This stuff is going in the van, right? <clears throat> it's 5.53, we've been up since four, getting ready to head out. All right, so we're at the ranger spot, and um, we got to show the bear cans. It's uh, 8.12. All right, so we're off the trail we're going to be doing. Rake Snake Loop. We're going to end up here, Junction Meadow, today, and then tomorrow we're going to be somewhere up here. Cool. So this is the hardest part of the trail. Actually not the hardest, it's just, you know, it's flat. You're under the sun and it's hot. Here's a deer feeding on the trail. I'm gonna be real quiet and leave him be. He's eating. Pretty cool to see a deer on the trail. So this is where we're going. 8.6 miles, trekking it. And 
Got in trouble getting out that way though. Got a rattlesnake right there. Be careful, is he? Yeah. He could come down right there. Quick. He's right oh, there. Okay. Small one. Stopped here for lunch. We filled the water out of this to drink. And now we're about to get ready to leave. We're about three miles and a half of our camping site. 1.30 right now. All right, so this was our campsite last night. Yesterday was day one. We're on day two. where well, these guys got up early this morning. We're about to uh, make a meal. We got water down there. We'll be out in a few minutes. Making plans. About to leave. So we're here now in this uh, waterfall. We need to be really careful. Watch your stepping here, okay? Dr dry spots. Been a tough hike today. Uh, we're at 10,000 feet of elevation and we're looking for a spot that we can sit and actually have lunch before we go on to Charlotte Lake, which is 1.2 miles. Six years ago, we did not come down this way. This is all new to me and Bernie. This is Charlotte Lake. And we're going to find a place where to put our tent and uh, we're going to go for a swim. I'm sure that water's cold, but I don't care because it's hot. So we bathed in this yesterday. It's a beautiful lake. And we had our dinner right there. Right in that spot there. Day three. Well, if you guys can make it to... Uh... Junction Meadow today. Mm -hmm. uh, which you go and this is what it looks like over the side. This stuff here is real loose, so you have to watch your the stepping. And we were camping somewhere down there. But it's camera time. So take the picture. But you rolled your eyes. Now I'm mortified. And still terrorized, push me behind to get This is where uh, we came up last time. This uh, glacier pool. And we have to go all the way up there. Over that summit. No need to argue. And yeah, I've had enough. Alright, so we're on top of the summit. That's what we're looking at. All right, we're leaving now, going over the ridge. Oh Had us safe travels. Sure, yep. So we made it finally to Arrowhead and I think we kind of beat the weather. I'm gonna swing this camera. You can see some black clouds rolling in. Um, but this is our campsite. I love this campsite. I have been here six years ago. I'm actually tent my my tent is right now situated where we first camped, and then the lakes on the backside of these pines. We just finished bathing. We'll get down drinking a little bourbon and, and make some food. Oh Pretty tough. <laughs> 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 We're drinking mango vodka. Yeah, it takes the breath out of you, don't it? Mm -hmm. All right, so we got to say goodbye to our campsite. We're out. Yeah, and uh, no need 
Here we go. Morning. The crossing of the bridge, one person at a time. All right, so I'm surrounded by mountains here. I'm just gonna pan a little bit so you get an idea what I'm looking at. And, uh, you know, the landscaping here is much different from what we were. We had one of our guys break his hiking pole, which is the most critical thing you need to do, do this. And he's right now trying to deal with, uh, an old injury on his knee, but uh, we're gonna get to fix that. So here's, here's Doug's situation. He broke his pole today, earlier, and this is his fix, what he's gonna do with it. Extra, extra tent pole. The extra tent pole. We're gonna put it together. Then we got some red tape. So this is what you can do if you get into a pinch. And then we're gonna snap this in two and tape it to the outside as a splint. There you go. More to follow. So part one, the spare tent pole shaft is inside and we use red tape that we get the red tape off of the pole and we bring that from the house just for emergencies like this. This is what now is called the outside splint. Here we go, the end product of this. It's gonna get them out. We finally made it. Uh, and your phone? Day five. You want your phone? And now we're just gonna head back and take a real shower. First, we're gonna drink some beers and eat some food, real food. This is a scene of my fellow friend's hiker that is getting the first true meal that is not dehydrated. <laughs> Look at all this pizza. So we're heading back home. We're done.